All right, here, Wednesday, I'm gonna try to learn some stuff. And this is a new episode of DE Raw. And this is almost super raw because I just spilt the floor cleaner all over myself. I had to change real quick. I almost left it on, but out of courtesy, didn't want all that gook all over me, so I changed. So <clears throat> today, let's get in the frame. There we are. Today, I want to talk about back pain, particularly a few movements that I personally do to keep, that has worked really well for me the last year, to keep my hips moving well and feeling good, all right? So first thing, real quick, I'm not a doctor. Don't treat me like one. I'm just talking from a guy that's been around the gym for a really long time and coached some people pretty often, all right? experience based and personal relevant experience because I got this blown out in my low back that has caused me pain for a very long time until I decided to take control of some of my mobility and let it heal and really strengthen around it. So real quick, got to keep cabs on time because I got to go get the kids. But real quick with your back, all right, you have lumbar spine, you have thoracic spine, you have cervical spine, all right? If you break your lumbar spine and you sever the cervical cord, nothing works from here down. If you hit the thoracic just right in this range, nothing works from here down. If you break anything in this glorious range, nothing works from here down. So with that said, <coughs> your spine is extremely important, okay? And it's very important to keep strong and functional for high quality of life. I can't remember the stats, but back pain is a massive, massive deal in our healthcare system and lost productivity in business. So healthy, strong backs, trunks, core, and hips, absolutely vital to your longevity game, feeling awesome, and being physically capable. So first off, second, third off, wherever off we are now, when I talk about strengthening your core, I don't mean just abs. Yes, your rectus abdominis, these muscles are vital, okay? But we also have to strengthen the old back straps, the erector spinae muscles on your back that go up. Now, a lot of times I know people think that when these get sore, that they're causing back pain. You have to really be able to differentiate between sore rector spinae muscles and injured spine. It's two completely different things. So really learning to delineate what's sore muscles, your QL, your quadratus laborum, fat pieces of meat down here, those also need trained. These add stability, rigidity, rigidity to your spine, right? Then you go up into your lats, your traps, these are massive muscles that, and you got your, all your neck muscles, your scalenes, I think. I don't know all the neck muscles very well. Uh, all this supports your spine. So your lumbar spine is meant to be kept in a fixed position, all right? Not much rotation, not much flexion and extension in your lumbar spine. Now I'm gonna take a hot take here. If you haven't been doing really bendy stuff since you were a small child, you're gonna lose that rigidity in your disc and your disc tissues as life goes on. So I would caution you trying to hit full flexion, full extension, forcing your lumbar spine into crazy positions, either via yoga or, I don't know, crazy weightlifting. The lumbar spine's meant to be fixed. So we get most of our movement of our spine through our thoracic spine. That's meant to be more mobile. Okay, you can move around. Again, <clears throat> the crazy back bends, crazy flexion, these things you need to be mindful of at where you're at in your life and where your spine's at in its health before you start really trying to force those extended ranges of motion. But that doesn't mean that we can't hit a functional range of motion, quality of life, stable spine, and I believe it doesn't just start with your core, it starts with your hips, all right? Healthy, mobile hips, and thoracic spine are the two areas we want to focus on when it comes to movement mobility and then strengthening 
rectus and your big back muscles along with your hips. So your hips are a platform that your spine sits on, right? So you got your spine, comes down here, sits on this platform. This platform is your hips. Strong butt, that's why I say, I like a fat ass. It's because a fat ass means a strong back, healthy back, right? So we build big butt, strong butt, strong hip flexors. Your psoas attaches from your femurs to your low back, to your lumbar spine. Direct attachment, they're big muscles. Huge stability comes from there, all right? So this all needs to be strengthened, stabilized, balanced out. And here are a few movements that I really have come to enjoy outside of the main compound movements, squatting, deadlifting, lunging. You know, these are the main strength compounding movements I do for my hips. I also hit the reverse hyper quite a bit, GHD, back and stitches. Like there's a plethora of exercises, but there's a few very specific ones that I personally have had a lot of luck with that are a little outside the normal weightlifting. So I'm gonna go over a couple of these, all right? So first one, <clears throat> now, depending on where you're at, another thing I wanna to touch on is if you are in an acute phase, you have pain right now. Be careful just starting these exercises, all right? You might need to get an assessment from somebody. Now, if you're a member at the gym, feel free to come talk to me. If I think you can start them, I'll be honest with you. If you need to see you know, a little more medical professional for an acute deal going on, a rest. Um, so just be mindful of where you're at, starting with this stuff, and don't push it too hard. All right, these are things we want to ease into. So first exercise that I come to love is the 90-90 hip thrust. Now, so 90-90, and I know it's not super zoomed in. I don't got a video man. My video man's a tripod. I got no friends to help me, so. Hopefully you guys get the gist. So 90 degree bend here, 90 degree bend here. The leg that's in front, this one, you're going to actively lift yourself up with that leg. Now, the money in all this is made on the eccentric side of the movement, the lowering phase, okay? The lengthening phase of the movement. So with 99 hip thrusts, we actively lift, we engage, in this case, my right butt cheek, and then I'm gonna slow, eccentrically load this, slow, touch the butt, pop back up. Touch the butt, pop back up, all right? So hitting five to 10 reps for three sets of this, great way to get the glutes working good. So you hit each side, and then once you get comfortable really doing that with um, body weight, you could add weight. So you just take a kettlebell, add a little weight to it, goblet style, slow, controlled, right here, all right? So three to five reps, three, I mean five to 10 reps, three to four sets of all these movements is kind of how I work. So that's, that's the starting point for that one, all right? Now you can ask Coach Chase, showed him this one, he really enjoyed it, he's implemented it himself. So that is the first one that I really like. So when you're thinking exercises, you want to go from opposites. So I will take that, get my hips, and then I want to do something that kind of hits the hip flexors a little bit uh, in the lengthening, strengthening. I really, really like the reverse Nordic for these. Now, some people might not be very comfortable sitting here. My legs are pretty sore right now. So I might not be able to explore this, but just sitting here is gonna start getting the quads. Now reverse Nordic, you're gonna squeeze your butt, lock your hips out. You can use your hands as a spotter and you're just gonna lean back. You're gonna eccentrically load this, all right? So you're gonna slowly lower yourself down in this, keeping that very rigid and then try to lift yourself back up. This is a great strengthening tool. Now, if you got knee problems going on and stuff, this might not be the best one for you, all right? Talk to a coach, talk to me. 
but working the range of motion regardless of how far you can spot. Okay, you can spot and load all this eccentrically, opening up the quads. And the goal would be getting back to where you're working full range in this move. Okay, now I'm not breaking at the hips. It is, is a little advanced, but you can start out very subtle range of motion there and build on it over time, eccentrically loading it. You're letting yourself come down slow, really controlling that. That's where the lengthening is taking place, okay? It's where the stretch and strengthen come together in a beautiful relationship. So hit the hip, hit the quadricep, a little hip flexor there. Here's another one that I really, really like a lot is the Jefferson curl. So Jefferson curl, here, I'm gonna, I think I can come a little closer. Here we go. So Jefferson curl is gonna be straight legs. You're going to roll, tuck your tummy in, roll your shoulders down, 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 into as much range as you can get. And you're gonna unwind. So you're rolling down, and then you're unwinding. This can be done with zero weight, okay? Working that full range of motion. I really like doing it with weight because why? Eccentrically loading. You know, you don't feel a lot of eccentric load from no weight. So going slow, controlled. I like standing up on something because then I can reach a little lower and then wind it back up. Five to 10 reps of this really gets the entire posterior chain. Try to hit these a couple times a week. And sometimes I do them super light. Sometimes I do them super heavy. You can train. I know in deadlifting, which is true, we don't want to break in the spine, right? We're gonna keep that nice flat back. But we can train these erectors working through the range of motion. <clears throat> so we should, absolutely, train them. Next stretch I'm gonna show you, or move, that I really, really enjoy for my hips. So we just hit the back and hit the hips one more time. It's gonna be an assisted airplane. I hope you can see this. One foot goes on the ground, you hold on to something. One foot's gonna go back. And you're going to rotate your hip into and open up right here. Hip. Okay. Now, the leg that I'm working is the one that is on the ground. Right, it's that right butt cheek right now that I'm rotating into and I'm coming out slow, controlled down, and then back out slow, controlled down, and then back out. Yeah, I like that one three sets of 10 each side, <laughs> fantastic. I probably oh, wow, look at that. that's authentic right there, teenage acne. Looky, I don't care. So, <clears throat> another hip, another hip flexor exercise. Good old fashioned couch stretch. I do like to load this a little bit, not with weight, but with tension. So, you're going to get in a position just like this, leg against something, and you are going to flex your butt cheek, okay? And you're going to come forward and then push back this leg, push, come forward. And you're flexing this leg, this butt cheek through the whole thing. And I like, I don't like static holding this. I don't like just sitting here, hanging out, you know, holding this stretch. Now I do have full range of motion here. Could gain a little bit more. The legs are really sore, but my goal is to flex into this, especially here, this really gets the hip flexor muscles. Flex, stretch, flex, 
stretch, right? Hit that five to 10 reps each leg, holding that glute tight and really controlling through that range of motion. I really don't hold a lot of static stretches anymore. I never had good luck with them. Never saw much progress with them, no matter how much I just sat there and held a static stretch. I found a lot of luck <coughs> loading these ranges of motion, pushing strength in both directions, all right? Now, one of my favorites, absolute favorites, we gotta hit these adductors to get the hips moving, strength, stability, <coughs> is the Cossack squat. Now, <coughs> lots of ways to approach this. A uh, scale way, I'm just gonna show you real quick. So, leaning into the squat, legs are wide, and you're going to drop down, back heel stays on the ground, working this. Now you can go toe up, you can go toe down, and you're gonna feel differences in your hips and adductors here. Come out, down into the other side, okay? A way I've been really trying to hit the hip flexors and adductors even more is I've been staying low really working this and you can take a weight and use it as a counterweight and really work this but you want to be able to hit if you can see let's see right there hit full range as much as you can now there's the super ninjas that can go all the way down touch their hip come out not there yet don't know if i'll ever be there but i'm very happy with the range of motion that I'm able to work with, and I'm now working with this with pretty good load. Nothing crazy, you know, 53, 70 pound kettlebells. Working that for strength sets now. I did start out though, no weight, and I started out no weight holding on. Holding on to something and using my arms to help get down into these positions safely without blowing anything out. So one thing you'll notice is I didn't do anything today specifically like stretching the spine, all right? I'm gonna show you one more. It's more of a stretch and rotation. And you just take these exercises, mix and match, figure out what works with you, play with them. The last one I've really come to love is, can't see that, all right. I've really come to love, you step into a hurdler I think there's a hurdler stretch. That back leg is going to stay, that knee is gonna stay off the ground. You're gonna plant one hand on the ground with the leg in front, that elbow. You're gonna go down, touch the ground, rotate up, okay? Down, touch the ground, rotate up. Now, you're gonna hit that on each side, okay? Big stretch, back leg stays off the ground. Down, touch the ground, rotate. Down, touch the ground, rotate. Now, this is holding more of a static stretcher here and a little rotation. Really, really enjoy that one a lot. So, <clears throat> honestly, there are so many exercises. I got tons of them. These are ones that I have been doing personally lately for me pretty consistently week over week i've been hitting variations of the exercises that i just showed you so grab them play with them hit your coach up hit me up happy to go over these with you guys and i will continue building videos like this hopefully it gives you guys a little help with your hip mobility back health once we hit the thoracic a little more, I want to go into some deeper details on reverse hyper, which is right here. Love this machine. Properly doing back extensions, uh, proper exercises that I really enjoy for strengthening the, the core, the rectus. So we'll, we'll try to build up on these, you know, each time I make a video. So use them, ask questions about them. As we start working our way through the body, I'm starting with the back. I'm gonna get into the shoulders. I'm currently nursing a pretty good shoulder injury. So as I start rebuilding, going through everything that I'm doing on the shoulder, I'll make a video, share with you guys, shoulder health. And we'll just keep building them, all right? So you guys will have these on our YouTube page, come back for reference. 
And again, if you got questions, especially if you're a member of the gym, by all means, talk to your coach. They're, all of them are familiar with a lot of these exercises. And feel free, hit me up also. I'm more than happy to help. Back pain has a special place in my heart because I've dealt with it for so long and it took me basically growing up to heal, recover, strengthen, and correct these imbalances and mobilize my hips. When I started mobilizing my hips, my back pain changed dramatically, all right? So when we think back pain starts in the hips, and then we strengthen the trunk and we stabilize our lumbar spine, all right? <clears throat> Love you guys and hope you get some value out of this. And I will see you guys on the next episode of DE Raw.